This is Dan with Napco Tech Support. Welcome to Starlink Radios. In this video, we will cover the basics of programming a Starlink radio. This applies to any model Starlink. We will also cover how to verify signals are being sent to your central station. After you've activated your radio and comnet, navigated to the SLE management page, also called the NOC, and entered your radio ID number into the field that says View Edit Radio Programming, you will see a page like this. It is always a good idea to verify your subscriber information matches correctly for the site you are installing the Starlink radio at. You will notice there are two options for programming on the bottom half of the page. The first is Auto Enroll Programming, and this is a default setting. We will discuss this method first. The second is Dealer Entered Programming, which we will review later in the video. You can tell which type of programming method is currently active based on the color of the box. If it is orange, that is the active method. Auto Enroll Programming This means that the radio will utilize the information programmed into your panels, communicator, or DACT to route signals to the central station. When you first power on the radio, the primary reporting CS telephone number, central station account number, and format captured fields will be blank as seen here. The supervisory timeout field will vary based on what plan you selected in ComNet. In order to utilize auto enroll programming, your panel's DACT or communicator must be connected to the tip and ring connections on the Starlink and have some basic programming. The panel must have a 10 digit phone number, a four digit account number, it must be set to a compatible signaling format and for touch tone dialing only. Please refer to your radio model's WI for supported signaling formats on that specific Starlink. After your panel is properly programmed and connected to the radio, you can send a test signal. There are two ways to verify that the signal was received by the radio. If you refresh your screen, you will now see that the phone number, account number, and reporting format fields will show an auto enroll. After the first time a radio captures this information, it doesn't automatically update again on the screen unless you click the Click Here Reset Auto Enroll button, even if you've changed that information in the panel's DAC. The second verification is by going to the Signal Log page. Now this screen contains a lot of information, but we're going to focus on just a couple fields in this video. You will notice the response field. That is the time that your central station acknowledged the signal. The event data field, which is the raw signal data received from your panel and transmitted to your central station. And the response field. If the response field shows OK, your central station accepted the signal and provided a proper kiss off. Auto enroll is a quick and easy method for installing a Starlink on any panel that meets the programming requirements. Now let's discuss dealer entered programming. Like auto enroll programming, dealer entered programming requires your panel DACT or communicator to be programmed with a 10 digit phone number, a four digit account number, a compatible signaling format, and touch tone dialing only. Unlike auto enroll, when dealer entered programming is utilized, the radio will not use the central station information programmed into the panel's DAC or communicator, but will override it with the information you enter here. When utilizing dealer entered programming, you have the option to use dial up based central stations, an IP based central station, or you can have an IP-based central station with dial-up as backup. Let's program one together. Even though this is a new radio, it's always good to be in the habit of clicking Upload prior to making any changes. This will ensure you have the current radio programming on your screen. If you do not do this step, you could accidentally change something you didn't mean to. You'll notice next to Status, it changes from Data Uploading to Status Running Properly. After the upload is complete, click the Edit button in the lower left, 
and then click the circle or radio button to the right of dealer entered programming. This will turn that box orange, indicating that it's now the active selection. If you're using a dial-up based central station, it's fairly straightforward. You would enter the central station phone number and the last four digits of the account number into the first primary fields. If you have a backup central station, you can enter that information into the first backup central station. The duplicate primary and duplicate backup are only used if you want to send duplicate signals to another central station or account number. Then select the poll fail timeout value. When still utilizing a dial-up based central station, a good rule of thumb is to select the lowest amount of time available to you based on the plan you selected for your poll fail timeout. The poll fail timeout called a debounce interval when used with IP based central station is a window of time in which the radio should send a supervisory signal. These are sent in the background and generally will not show up in your signal log. If the radio does not send a supervisory signal within the specified time, you will get a loss of central polling signal at your central station to indicate that there's a problem that should be investigated. Now click Save and then Accept. You'll notice again changes download pending and then changes back to device running properly next to status. This tells you the download was done successfully. If you're using an IP based central station, we have other videos available in our tech library to assist you with this. In this video, we've discussed how to program a radio both in auto enroll and dealer entered programming. We have also discussed how to verify signals are reported properly to your central station. Mm -hmm.